Live brunch. We are live. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Live Brunch. Live brunch. Live brunch. Welcome to another episode of Live Brunch with me, Johan Philip, and I'm joined by Joel Virgo and Toby Ford Weston. I'm going to channel my inner Jackie Weaver and <laughs> yeah. control this Zoom call. You have no authority. Yeah. <laughs> I will kick you out of the conversation. <laughs> um, oh, we've, How did we get through our whole service without referring? I, I don't know why nobody brought it up. <laughs> that well, iconic bit of. Well, I'm so glad you brought that in. Of, uh, That's what you brought video. Thank you. And I can leave now because it is good. Anyway, um, so we've had, we've just listened to you speak to us on the, the topic of race and cultures and how the righteousness that Jesus brings about is, is far better than um, any other righteousness that mm. we may proclaim ourselves. Yes, yeah. Um, and this was, we've had quite a few questions on the chat, which I'm looking forward to getting through. But at the end of this, we also have some helpful application questions, um, which we will look at at the end, which you might think about doing in your small group. Um, yeah, Joel, should we, should we jump straight in? Sure. And Tobes as well, feel free, good to have you with us. Mm. Um, one of the first things that, that you said, or well, not, one of the first things that came to mind when you said, um, uh, sorry, I did write it down, was you talked about the, the law doesn't bring about true heart change, mm. but it's being filled with the Holy Spirit, which um, changes our hearts and changes attitudes and, and makes us more Christ-like in our approach to, I guess, racism, um, how does one go about doing that? Or what does that look like in one's life? Yeah, I, I think the closest I got was, was looking at Jesus' example. And the most graphic is that John 13 story of the washing of the disciples' feet, which, which is kind of full of symbolism. It's one of those things that it, it pays to read slowly. Um, one of my friends, Andy McCulloch, uh, talks about this in, in his um, teaching on this. I think it's in his book, Global Humility, uh, where he talks about culture crossing the way Jesus does and you know the the, the shedding of the outer garment uh, is very instructive it's it's in line with what Philippians 2 says about Jesus um, didn't consider equality with God as something to be grasped it's not that he forgot that he was from heaven it's not that he forgot he was the son of God when we say you know Jesus laid things aside it doesn't mean he laid aside his identity when we cross cultures, it doesn't mean that we have to stop being who we really are and, or even disdain our identity as though that, you know, there's something despicable about our background necessarily. There may be things about our background that need to be despised. There may well be. There often are. But not necessarily, not just because of it's our identity. It's, it's going to be more um, learning not to hang on to the privilege of it as though it's something we, we, we're entitled to. Um, and I suppose the person that's crossing cultures will be tempted to, to think, um, really, this person that I'm getting to know should fit around me and my preferences. Really, they should, uh, because my preferences are right. And we do do that an awful lot, probably without always realising it. And so to just stop and consider, what, where, where are my preferences? Are my preferences Jesus's ones or just my ones? And if they're just my ones, then frankly, they can just be, they can go. They can. I can, I can let go of them. Uh, if they're Jesus ones, then that's different. But, but a lot of our cultural references are ones that we need to be very prepared to, to let go of in the greater interests of, of, of loving my neighbour. Of, of, you know, that's a greater call on me than, than having everything the way I would prefer. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, uh, Joel, you said that the gospel is a better solution because it addresses the heart but how come many Christians now and in the past are so poor at this? The church can and has been just as racist and prejudiced as any other community, sometimes more so. Does that not disprove your point that the gospel is a better solution? Well, it's, it, it's, a, it's a very, very important thing to face, um, the sheer reality that the church's record, public record on, on race and racism is uh, patchy at best. I mean, it's, it's disgraceful in particular cases. Um, and, uh, and so that's just something we have to be totally real about and repent about and, and uh, take very seriously indeed. It doesn't disprove the Christian message. 
because in fact it's kind of in line with what it, if you read the bible and read the story of god's people it's actually the kind of thing you would half expect that god's people are not exempt from the charge of failure in the old testament and the new testament there is racism amongst god's people it's just completely rebuked so the prophets in the old testament rebuke it and in the new testament jesus rebukes it the apostles rebuke it um, and so what the, the standard we're called to is high it doesn't mean that um, uh, we will, the record will always show we've done it brilliantly. But what we tend to do, I would say, culturally, is when, a, when there is a, uh, an example of hypocrisy, it, we tend to yield the ground and say, oh, in that case, forget it then. We, we, we can't even bother. We can't even try. But that's unnecessary because, no, 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 th th that will happen, but it doesn't stop the call being... We should be doing better. So people like Martin Luther King rightly said, the church has got a terrible record, but the same Dr. King said, I love the church. I mean, he literally, he, he took me, he believed in the church. He said in his Birmingham letter, the letter from Birmingham jail, he preaches a very high view of the church, which is fascinating, in spite of how the fact is, he was being massively let down by the church in the southern states in America. They were being terribly racist. But he still said, no, but I know we're called to something better. It's a bit like if, if, I'm, if I'm taking my family to Scotland and we go out onto the street, we pack the car, we get ready, and I realise I've got flat tyres. And then I see a kid going past really fast on a skateboard. I don't think, ah, the skateboard's moving, there's some momentum. Let's, let's take the stuff, let's get on the skateboard, let's go to Scotland on the skateboard. Uh, there may be some mo momentum there, but I'm not going to get the flipping family to, to Scotland there. We've got we've to fix the car. Wow, that is a massive comparison. Yeah, yeah. So the world is saying, we know how to handle racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they look like they do. Yeah. Sometimes they're better at it than we are. Does that mean that we say, oh, forget the Christian message, forget the church? No, no, no. We've got to get to Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> we need a car. We need something better than just a few secular ideas. We need the, the gospel of Jesus. Right? We need to fix the tyres and get back on the road. That's right. Why did you choose Scotland as the place where there's no racism? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. Ask, especially, ask after Scotland, especially after Scotland beat England. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this is an inappropriate yeah, example. It's a, it's a Very example. untimely. Yeah, but it's uh, good for us. Uh, it's a, it's humbling. Thank you. Um, just following up on that question, um, Oh, missed it. Here we go. I hope you're going to ask Toby when I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, Toby. <laughs> uh, well, both of you, both of you carry uh, senior leadership in this church, so, so this is a question to both of you. What would you say to someone in Emmanuel who feels like they have been unfairly treated, left out, or treated differently because they are black? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I would say um, it's important to talk about it um, with uh, your site leader. And um, that's the first thing that I would say. Um, I, I, I've learned over the years that I've been here that, um, uh, that I, it's, it's important to have a high view of church, Joel was even saying about uh, Martin Luther King, but the, the church is full of people like me and you, especially you, um, people that are flawed, <laughs> <laughs> people that are not perfect. Yeah. And um, that can happen. And I, I have no doubt that that would happen in, in many churches because it's full of people that are being redeemed. Um, that's not to say that, oh, therefore it's okay. Mm. But I think that um, kind of the whole Matthew 18 um, uh, thing about going to um, the brother that sinned against you or the sister and saying, hey, can we talk about this? Mm. I think that's important. Uh, and I think um, as well as that, um, the vital role of forgiveness. Mm. Um, for forgiveness is one of the pillars of Christianity. It's, it's, it's right at the center of the Christian message. And... Um, being able to forgive from the heart, uh, I think is important because ultimately forgiveness, um, you, know, you are the one that it sort of takes captive of, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that you can be free, so that the, the, the person who's asked the question can be free. And I think I'll just add as well that um, so, so uh, one, uh, it, it can be that s people can feel like this bad thing has happened to me or I've been treated in a, in a way that I would call, say, racist even in the church. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes the impulse can be to leave the church, kind of, oh, I'm not going to be part of this church. Mm. Um, but it, but it, this kind of sense of injustice or frustration that the person is feeling may well be from God. Mm -hmm. It may be God is calling you or that person to be an instrument to help change the situation and to, to bring the church back to mm. being the manifold, Ephesians 3, wisdom Brilliant. of God. Yes. Um, so th those are the things, three things I would say. Speak to the person um, uh, uh, forgive and also know that actually we can change together with God's help. Brilliant. Yes. 
Yeah, sure. jump to the next one. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, awesome. What does Emmanuel actually do to create a more cross-cultural community? It can feel like it's quite hard to get to know people here, their cliques. Um, yeah, what, what does Emmanuel do to create more cross-cultural community? Yeah, I, I think when, you, when somebody asks the question, what does Emmanuel do? Um, I, I, I think there's a sense in which you're asking two questions. You're kind of asking, what does the, the organizational structure of the church do, the, 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 the institution, if you like, and what does the body of the church do? And uh, this, this kind of thing will get achieved by both. Uh, as an as a organization, in terms of what the leadership decides on and what we try to work out in the program of the church, well, I suppose we're always learning, we're trying things. I think during lockdown, it's been necessary to learn to show our diversity on the camera and work to demonstrate. Now, that we are uh, we, we really deliberately leaning into this to say, look, guys, this is important. We are a, a diverse church. And, and that needs to be shown more, not, not just something that, that, that you have to sort of dig to find out. Um, so sometimes it's just a simple thing of, you know, what, what's going on on the camera. But it's, it's, um, that's a very shallow end. That's, that's, that's OK, but it's relatively trivial. Um, what's actually going to make more impact is certainly, I, I, I should also mention leaders coming through. So the leadership of the church uh, not being sort of inappropriately dominated by one ethnicity. Historically, that has been true of us, and it, it needs to be something we, we, we address. And so we're, we're talking about that, thinking about how we can work on that all the time. Uh, and by God's grace, I think we're seeing progress in that. Um, so there are some things, again, that's, that's more at the kind of the structural end, and that is very important. I think that's biblical. Um, but I think the reality is that where it will make a biggest difference is in the ordinary life of the body. Mm. And I think some of that is just in the kind of friendships we're deliberately making. We do tend to build cliques. Um, everyone who gets irritated by a clique is probably in a clique. You know, we, we, we mustn't be too judgmental. So it's, it does come down to the individual making good decisions and thinking, okay, I'm gonna deliberately seek out friendships with people who are just culturally different than me. Mm -hmm. And that mean, might mean crossing a cult, an ethnic barrier. Mm -hmm. I hope it does, but it might actually also just be, you know, if you're, you're a teenager, deliberately building friends with people who've got some years on them is going to bless you and, and, and vice versa. So I, I, I think it's a lot about deliberately building friendships. I think lockdown might create opportunities that we don't realise. We've still got a lot of time to do friendships that in some ways are a bit more practically easy. Just because you just spend some time with someone online is, in a strange way, it might create more freedom to do that without it. It, you know, it doesn't cost you a whole evening. <laughs> um, so I, I just think, yeah, take steps, um, because that's where the rubber hits the road. It's in the life of the body. If there's genuine community that does that, that's better than Brilliant. all the, the program structural decisions we make. That's so good. I think we've, we've been chatting about this a few, um, a few times, where we've both been around ch at this church for about 10 years now, over 10 years. Um, and I do really like that this church takes discipleship very seriously. And you don't just thrust people onto the, into the spotlight. You know, there's a process of observation, of conversation. Yeah. Um, and I feel like we've been through that process, haven't we? We haven't. Mm -hmm. We aren't here just because we aren't white. I think we've uh, we, we've gone through that. And I think foundationally, that is so good for me. Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful that I've been through a long process uh, yeah. of people walking alongside me. All of the rituals and, and yeah, 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 yeah. It's been incredible. <laughs> Hate handshakes. And that one with the pig's head really got me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, people get freaked out, but yeah. it's fine. It's but we're but we're now, and uh, I'm in charge, so <laughs> I have authority. You have authority. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think our royal family is racist? The institution is racist. Is that why Meghan found it hard to fit in, and they need to show change so the rest of the UK can? Mm, well, I think Joel. It's an interesting question. Joel's just preached a message on. Um, you know, what Pharisees kind of do. And I, I guess one thing that, uh, how a Pharisee might respond to that question is to, um, without knowing the, the heart, sort mm. of look at the public, yeah. kind of what's being said and, and just and go along with that. Um, I think the, the honest truth is we can't know what's going on in a person's heart. And I think it would be inappropriate for us to say they are or they aren't, because we just don't know enough about the situation. And even if we did, I think the forum to, to do that would probably be more one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. If 
I could get an audience with Queen <laughs> Wish. I probably can't. Not recently. Uh, <laughs> I'm not in a, yeah. yeah. So, um, keep writing those letters. Don't yeah, don't I will. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, I, I, you know, it's an interesting question, but I, I, we wouldn't be able to really to comment on it because we don't know enough about it. You don't read the tabloids, you know, on top of... What's Me? <laughs> no, I float on a cloud, Johan. <laughs> <laughs> Above right. the tabloids. I thought so. <laughs> How long do we need to feel the guilt of sin before being satisfied with Christ having paid for it? And when does it get too far and we need to get over ourselves and enjoy forgiveness? I, I don't think we need to feel the guilt of sin in, a, in, in some sort of have, have I done it enough kind of way. That's, I think um, uh, if, if you're talking, putting it in the context of this issue, um, guilt is not um, a, a useful force of motivation. <laughs> It won't, it won't help. It won't help anybody. Sometimes as parents, we think it can work. <laughs> yeah, But yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got five kids who will tell you, yeah, <laughs> he's tried. Um, but it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting how, how easy it is to imagine that the, the subject of race is a different category. You know, that there's a kind of an appropriate guilt that, that we really ought to succumb to. I think that there's an appropriate um, shunning of the past. And, and so when Paul talks about, I was a Pharisee and I, and, and I, I, I um, persecuted the church, he talks about himself in very bleak terms about his past. And it was racism, frankly, and, his, and a kind of a religious racism, uh, hatred of Gentiles and despising, despising of them. Uh, and we could go into that, but it, I mean, it's fascinating that it's, that it's Paul himself who does this that he models it. He shows that he, dis he hates his racism of the past and he really is, in, in, in a sense, ashamed of it, but he's not ashamed. He's much more conscious, much more conscious of, of being forgiven, of being a child of God, mm. of being uh, chosen and loved, and you know he doesn't deserve it. He's like the least of all the least of all God's people, but he's still like, I'm a son, I'm a child, I'm an apostle by God's grace. You can't get over it. And we must have the accent on that on that syllable, you must be able to be able to say, um, uh, be able to be able to say, what am I talking about? Uh, you must be able to be able to say. Mm. I'll shut up, Toby, what have you got to say? Well, I you're just to, not able I've to made say what point. you wanted to say. <laughs> well, I think uh, just to help John make that point even better, um, where, where it, Romans uh, says, where sin increased, grace increased all the yes. more. And the way I picture it practically in my head is I see a hill of my sin, but then behind that hill and sort of, or even in front of that hill, I see a mountain of yeah, God's grace. Beautiful. And, uh, you know, we're aware that there was a hill there, right? But there's a mountain and it's like the mountain, but the mountain. And that's just kind of a practical way of, of looking at it, perhaps. Yes. Brilliant. Very good. Enjoy forgiveness. Absolutely enjoy it. Mm. Uh, next question. Uh, love that we get to take Jesus' light burden. Mm. Uh, re reference to Matthew. Mm. How do we know what this looks like practically and carry it forward in a godly way? I wonder if we, if we narrow this down to, mm. I guess, the topic of racism. Yeah, it's a brilliant question. I love that. I, I mean, such as it is, I'll share one or two things. I think it deserves more time, but I think the example I used was with, of somebody who went to plant churches or to, to preach the gospel in a different culture. And um, the, for him, it wouldn't have felt like a light burden all the time because he was realising he had to repent of, of a racist heart, mm -hmm. racist attitude. And that's not comfortable. There's a lot of that that is painful. There are moments in sanctification that are that are that really sore. You know, just but God does put His finger on things, and it's 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 not pleasant. So we, I think, when we say the burden is light, it doesn't mean that if ever you feel a little bit like, oh wow, I've got that wrong. I need to say sorry to that person. I need to make amends, and maybe even labour to win someone back, and spend time just praying about them, thinking about reaching out maybe for a long time, you know, that can feel, feel, be a bit of a labour. That doesn't mean, oh, oh, the burden stopped being light. This can't be right. I must be, you know, that repentance will involve some, some of that occasionally. And we mustn't assume that we are off, off the, the path. Um, I think the key thing in all of it is, is really to keep coming back to what Toby's saying, to have grace as the, the big mountain. Um, and because it does tend to make the burden lighter, even when we are in repentance or, or needing to cross a cultural thing and saying goodbye to something we would like about, you know, learning a language, say, you know, I think of my friends that went, you know, various friends that have gone overseas to plant churches have had to learn languages 
very slow, painful, hard work, very hard work. And uh, I can imagine them thinking, Jesus, you said your burden was light. <laughs> but I'm learning this language. And it's like, no, 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 this is part of it. It's okay, it's okay. You know, and just knowing him in it, his grace in it is, is, is important. So. Yeah. People have asked me if I learned to speak English before I came to this country. <laughs> I wonder why. That. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't grow up in this country. Can, next question. Can you say something about discrimination in the church and exclusion based on, on other things than race, maybe education, wealth, or some other perceived non-conformity? Um, yeah, I think that, <laughs> um, it, it, you know, we, since Genesis 3, I mean, sin is in the world, and we will use, we, by we, humanity will use anything uh, to try and exclude <laughs> one another. We, we are all about um, uh, hanging around, if you like, with the people by default that look most like us, or, or I should say function most like us. Mm. So to be honest, sometimes the question of race, um, sometimes it's, it's more of a question of function. Um, I uh, grew up in this country though I was born in Nigeria, and so I function quite well in this culture. I kind of get it. And, um, but there may be someone, say, that came from a European country last year yeah. um, that functions very, very differently. And so is it a question of race? Well, maybe. Or is it more of a question of function? And so sometimes I think the, 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 the key issue sometimes is more a functional issue, although the race issue can obviously work into, mm. into that. Uh, so I think, I think in relation to that, I think... We, whether you're from a different class or different education system, people, you can feel that tension. <laughs> you will be able to feel that kind of difference. And so it certainly can. And so race is one of the ways we can exclude, but there will be many others. And we must, um, if we are to uh, be followers of Jesus, look to, to root those things out and, and to, to love, uh, just as Jesus did. He, he chose um, uh, uh, fishermen, uh, mm. for example, and, and not, the, not, not Pharisees, but at the same time, he, uh, Paul was highly educated. He studied under Gamaliel, yeah. one of the leading rabbis. And, and so actually, the, the church is meant to be this wonderful, diverse, manifold, multifaceted people, um, which crosses all sorts of uh, barriers, including age, race, function, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so we do well to, to follow Jesus in that. And there's something about being addressed as brothers and sisters. So even though people may be different, Relationship is at the heart of, yes. of, of how we connect with people. Yeah, so it's true. not just intellectually knowing, oh, okay, you're from a different community or a different function or a different culture. But no, brothers and sisters, there's, there's something about uh, a unity, but also a unity of affection. There's affection with your sibling. Mm -hmm. So very much getting to know people, build those relationships. Don't just say, yes, the, the church has got different people in and great, we can accept them. No, the Bible says go one step forward and brothers and sisters befriend yes, them and yes. bring them into It's fascinating that in, in Acts chapter 11, I, I, I just hit again by this recently, that, that it's when the, when the believers who are from Jewish background started to share the gospel with full Gentiles, not, not God-fearing Greeks who were kind of Jewish already, but Gentiles who had no, <laughs> no background whatsoever with the God of Israel, they start to reach out to them and befriend them, bring them into the kingdom. And they're brothers and sisters with Greeks who are very pagan, probably very different, very different culturally, shockingly different, probably. But they befriended them, they loved them, and they shared Jesus with them, and they became brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It says that is where, it was in Antioch, in Acts 11, that is where the believers were first called Christians. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. That's cool. It's like the first point where it's like, we, we don't have a category for you people. Yeah, it's like we, you, we used to be able to put you in that, that pigeonhole, Jews who think the Messiah has come. Mm. You're Jews who think he hasn't, you're Jews who think he has. And, and, and you're Greeks who, who don't believe in the God of Israel at all. You people, you're Greeks, you're Jews, what are you? We, you, 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 what, are you? what is the thing that unites you? Mm. You look different, you dress different, you eat different, everything is different about you. Your history is different, you're so different. What is the thing? And it, all they could say is Jesus. Wow. It's the only thing. It's like, oh, you're... Christ is the thing. So you can see what I can imagine them in their heads like Christ, 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 Christ people, Christ, Christians. So it's like, that's how it happened right there. And that's, and you think, when you build a community where everyone's basically the same, the world doesn't notice. When you build a community, it's like, what? I don't get it. How can you be close? Okay, it must be Jesus. And that's what we want.
we are running slightly over, but we've got some really tasty questions. So, oops, sorry, I want, us, I want us to keep going for a few more minutes. Um, can people still hear you? Can people still hear me? I trust you. We guys. just smashed his microphone today. <laughs> I, um, I think you might have lost your authority in this meeting. <laughs> I think the vice chairman might suddenly. <laughs> as long as you can hear you and you, that's, that's what we care about. Um, is race and sexuality sacred? That's what the question was. Well, I think um, it depends on how you, 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 you class sacred, how you define it. Um, I would say that um, race and sexuality are, are gifts from God. And um, if that's your definition of sacred, then I would say, hmm. yes, um, they are beautiful, <laughs> beautiful hmm. beings that display something of what God is like. Hmm. And they help us. And we, we, we learn more about God by having a, a, a culturally uh, diverse church. We, we kind of learn more about what, who he is and how he functions and Brilliant. what he's done. Mm. Um, and and I, think that's, I think that's really, really important to, to, to say. So uh, to be brief, I suppose, to, to the question, if that's how you define it, then, yeah, they're, they're beautiful uh, things. Brilliant. Mm. Two more questions. Um, there's lots that we can learn from the secular conversations against racism, some of the, the campaigns and some of the organizations, mm. but mm. you'd have presented them differently. You're saying the gospel does offer something mm. better. Mm. What are some of the things that we can learn from cultures, yes, yeah. uh, from a non-Christian cultural yeah, response good. to racism? Yeah, I, I, I don't think I could give you sort of the list of things we can learn from them because I think um, it, would be, it would take too long and it wouldn't be a... I, I think what perhaps the behind the question is, is <laughs> Does this mean, that, you know, when we say, no, the gospel does better work than the, the law or the world's ideas, does that mean that we just ignore uh, what a non-Christian has to say about race? And the answer is no, no, no. Uh, because actually, even that would not be biblical. <laughs> the Bible teaches something much broader than that, which is, well, we, we call it common grace, um, which simply means that, that God is so kind that he's put wisdom into the hearts of people who don't acknowledge him. And some people who are atheists, uh, uh, who are communists, who are Muslims, will, will see things about racial relationships that Christians are wise to listen to. And think, oh, no, no, you've seen something that I wouldn't have seen, and I, need, I needed that insight. The question is, where do we integrate it? So what a, a wise Christian must do is think, okay, I'm gonna receive wisdom wherever God brings it to me, but I will integrate it into a worldview that is shaped by the gospel. So there'll be some things that you say, yeah, I can, that's good, but I'm going to spit that bit out. You chew, you chew the meat and you spit out the bones. So people get very um, concerned about the relationship between the church and critical race theory, um, for example, um, and, and rightly, because there are certain features of critical race theory that, that are very different to the gospel, the way, un they under the way such things understand the problem with society, uh, the nature of humanity, where history is going. They, they've got radically different answers to all those questions than the gospel does. Mm. So of course we're going to not agree with everything. Of course we're going to say, no, 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 that, that, that's not the same as the gospel. We can't just, just say, oh, from now on we'll strap that onto the gospel. No, 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 it doesn't work. It's like oil and water, they don't work. But it's not oil and water because there will be some things in it which they're right to be concerned about. There'll be some features of critical race theory where it's like, no, the reason you get angry is for, it's for a good reason. Uh, there's injustice in the world. Well, do you think Christians are supposed to say, no, there isn't? Until I say so, there isn't. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. If, if, a, if a, a secular person is seeing genuine injustice and seeing that the strong are overpowering the weak, do you know who cares about that? The God of the Bible does. Oh, yeah. And so if, if a secular, if a communist sees that, they're, they, they're seeing something that God cares, they just might need to, we might need to think, how do you fit that in without swallowing the whole philosophy? Brilliant. And that's worth time and process and thought. Last question, really quick. Um, what steps should, should someone at Emmanuel take to put your sermon into practice? I guess that's for both. Yeah, yeah, go to the toast. Yeah, I think just, um, I think examining how we um, are against racism, uh, I think, is it, to be quite blunt, are we kind of, Pharisees and how we, we we go about it and how what is our use of social media like on the on the subject how how do we how do we speak about it um, and understanding actually no I, I think I I don't just want to display my righteousness um, 
Jesus even talks about, it's in terms of prayer, he talks about shutting the door um, and going to your father who sees in secret. And maybe there's some secret work that needs to be done, um, not just in, in prayer, but actually reaching out to people, not, on, in, not in public, and, and trying to reach out to people that are different from you, uh, also function differently as well, um, particularly, I think, um, and I think that's it. It's not, I don't think there's a quick fix. I think it's a, it's a lifestyle um, of, of doing that. And it's not easy because naturally we, we like our comfort zones and our cliques, but um, pursuing that right. I think is the only way we can really um, overcome uh, this and be a real, really where God wants us to be on it. Thanks, Dobbs. Sure, I, I don't think I'd add much to that. I think it's a really good, wise application. Yeah. Uh, guys, we've massively overrun. Forgive me if your chicken is burning. Or forgive, lamb, forgive him, in especially. My, in my instance, <laughs> in the, well, I'm doing lamb. Um, very much these conversations need to be outworked in community. And so we do small groups. Small groups are sort of, you can sign up to a small group at weimanual.com slash small groups. Here are some questions we think could be helpful in carrying on this conversation. Uh, what has your experience been of relating and befriending people who are different to you? What has made it tricky and what have been the benefits? If Jesus calls us to not just be against racism, but proactively loving and befriending others, what does that look like for you? And what could it look like? What has helped you or challenged you from this message? What questions on the subject do you still have? And just to end with saying, maybe this is, uh, this is a, a sensitive topic. And this isn't just intellectual stuff. This very much goes into the heart of who we are. And uh, maybe it, it stirred something in you which you're like, I'm, I'm feeling really burdened by this, or I'm feeling really hurt by this. Please, please get in contact. Uh, we are manual.com slash prayer. There's our prayer rooms are open. Just any, any context where you can connect with us and, and talk to us. We very much love to connect and pray and talk to you uh, and do life in community. But thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you back next week. See you guys.